Hello and welcome to the continuation of the course Practical Machine Learning for Beginners Model Building to Deployment. This is the third approach or framework we are using to deploy our model. We've deployed the use case here using Flask framework. We've also done the same thing using Streamlit and in this video we we'll focus on Fast API. So before I even talk about Fast API, let's check our folder. This is our project folder. We have our data, the Pico model and the rest. In case you are not part of this, you can check previous video where we work with this thing. We trained our model, we did everything that needs to be done up to the point that we have now. All right? And also our Visual Studio code here, which we use. Okay, what you can see on the screen right now is the last code, lines of code for Streamlit app. As you can see here, less than 30 lines of codes. This will also be very fewer and fewer than this 27. All right. So let's go and check what do we uh, have here. Flask API is, I mean, Fast API framework is a very high performance and it's easy to learn. It's just one of those frameworks you can use to service your code. Uh, not necessarily machine learning alone. Any application you build, even with Python, you can use this to service them. All right. And of course, we'll be needing um, Juvicon as well. Juvicon is just more or less the backend server that helps us to keep in check whenever the application is running, running the server, the backend. That is more or less what Juvicon will do. Both of them can be easily be installed using pp install or if you want to use Conda, you can try the Conda approach. You just search for it, you see, even on this documentation page. I'm going to also include the link to all this documentation in the video description section for you to read more about them. Right, let's dive in now and create the solution. Yeah, let's deploy using Fast API. The first thing to do is to create a file, a Python file within Visual Studio Code in my project folder. So I'm going to click on this new file and call it um, ML Fast API, ML Fast API dot py, making it a Python file, which I have right here. And what I'm going to do right away is to import the libraries that I need to use. So I'm going to say from Fast API import Fast API. I will need this. Remember, I talked about Uvicon. I'm going to import Uvicon. I'm also going to import Pickle because the model is Pickle already. Import Pickle so that I can use it to unwrap the model. So defining an application here is similar to Flask, where you're able to just define app. For example, app equals to I'm going to just initialize by saying fast API. That is all. But I might want to also run debug so I can say debug equals to true so that I can open debug and capture that. After this, when it comes to routing, creating a route uh, is similar to that of fast API uh, Flask as well. We start with add symbol. What is the name of the app? Which is this app dot what function? There are different call method that it can take. I'm going to use get. You can use get. You can use put. But you use get because it's the commonly used one. Then I have this home directory, which is more or less the home directory. So within this home directory, what do we want to do? I want to define the function, which I'm going to call home. And what should the function do? It should return something. So when you get there, it should return something. And we will define this as a dictionary. So I'm going to put it here, test. Dictionary is key and value. So the text is dictionary. Um, the text is, the key is text. And the text itself is going to be the value, I mean, which is car pricing, um, yeah, prediction solution. That is it, car pricing prediction solution. That is it. All right, so it will return this. With what we have here, our model is working. So I'm just going to add the last line here and say if name equals equals our main what should happen then juvicon juvicon should run dot run while they're running the name is called app so you should just run the app and that is it so i'm going to save this and now that i've saved this i can easily come to my uh i don't need this of course i can click back here just to run the terminal by clicking here automatically is running here on this um command line on this URL. So when I follow the URL, you see I'm there. This is it. Text car pricing prediction solution. And if I go here and go to docs, that is where you can actually interact with it. That's one of the benefits of fast API. By default, I have this. 
Well, you can easily interact with this environment, which is more or less called Swag. Before it used to be Open API, now which is used to call Swagger, but now it's Open API. So let's go back and um, edit this so we can see it's quite working just for us to come back here and define the route to our application which is the model itself so let's define another route i'm going to call this uh, app dot it's going to be get as well but the route here will be predict so this is the route where we can predict our data then let's define a function define uh, uh, my function here would be predict so when you define a function, you need to set the parameters that you want to use. So those are the callable parameters that you need to provide before that thing can run. Uh, here we didn't provide any parameter to home, that is why it could run this. If it needs a parameter, we ought to supply before it can run, because that should be an input. But here, I'm going to set all the variables we need so that our model can make a prediction. So uh, even though you have to set it in value, key value, I'm going to put first is year. And I'm going to say, okay, define the data type string. Either string or numeric, all will work for our model because of the way we built it. Then the next is present, present price, underscore uh, price. This as well is str string. Everything is string. So I'm going to fast forward this and type for all other variables that we need in our model. All right. I am done doing this, so I just have to put my colon here because I'm defining a function here and put press enter key so that I can bring me to a new line, okay, which I am right now. All right, so the next thing for here is to a model. So I'm going to try pick a model, excuse me, model. I'm creating a variable for model. I want to import my model now. Model equals to pickle. This is what I'm calling pickle.load now, and I'm going to make it open. What am I opening up? I'm opening up the directory where I have my model. And that is easy and straightforward. I'm going to go back here, click on this link, copy the directory here, um, come back to, to paste it here. Of course, I'm going to put code around it. Here's my directory code around it and code around it. And I'm going to change this backward slash to forward slash because that is the directory where the code is saved you can default the you can define the parts you know by default but i'm just using this then i'm going to put this uh, forward slash again and tell the name of that particular pickle file which is random underscore forest underscore model dot pkl okay that way i have defined the, the model okay uh it needs to be there needs to be identification here. Yeah, I think that is why this is bringing error. All right, so I have this. Um, and the next thing to do is yeah, since I already import it, I need to create a variable say uh, make prediction. This is my make prediction variable. And what is that variable doing? It's going to call a model.predict. So model.predict, I'm going to pass in all the variables that I've collected here. So for example, year in that same order, I'm going to pass in year, present. So I'm going to be fast with it as well let me fast forward this all right i'm done with this so the next thing here is um the output of this particular thing i'm going to create another variable called output equals i just want to round up the output to the nearest two decimal places so output here which is uh, make prediction that's make prediction so index to the first guy there um comma two decimal places so should pick, put it to two decimal places and after that then return i mean the usual code return in a dictionary format now what are you returning here a text called you can sell your car for use this and come here dot format open this bracket and put output here because that's the last value coming from the output all right so we are actually done let's have 27 lines of code uh, except all these different lines i'm going to save this this thing saves automatically as i click on controls to save the model is refreshed so if i go back to my browser and reload from this same docs okay i think that is why this is not served it is not served with um, 
Juvicon, I'm not sure. I only okay, so that's the advantage. So I'm going just going to come here and stop this and use Juvicon. Juvicon. I'm going to type what is the name of the file itself. ML fast API. What is the name of the app? Which is app. This the um, I think then reload. Reload means it's automatically reload like a server. So this way, yeah, it's running now and this will keep refreshing and reloading. If I go back to that same link now and reload this, you see we now have the other part of which is the predict side. When I click on predict, you see all the parameters are here. They are required. If there's anyone that is optional, there's a way you can set them to be optional. All these guys are required. If I need to test them, I will just click on try it out. And um, here I can then put a car maybe 20, 20. Or what is the present price? The price is 5,000 US dollars. Kilometer driven on, on 100,000. Am I the primary owner? Yes. Is the diesel? Is the fuel type diesel? No. Is it petrol? Yes. Seller? Am I individual? Yes. The transmission is automatic. Then I'm going to click on execute. It will load. And right here, the thing will be here. Okay. I have some error here from the response body. Um, okay, let me also check it out here. Yep. Okay, I made a mistake. I need to declare the type here. Okay, what type of load am I opening? I want to put it in a mode. What mode am I opening the Pico file? Read binary. You can make it write binary. That's when you want to open it also. I can write object into that file. But here I'm not writing object to it. The file is there. I just want to read object from you. So I'm going to save. Uh, now you know you can see this guy now is automatically refreshing and restarting the app that's the advantage of that command we use to reload okay application startup complete i can go back um if i execute again now it should work okay i guess i okay so it's working now it's done and you can see you can sell your car for four thousand two hundred and eighty eight point four five dollars like this is fantastic you can use this to clear you can change the parameter here and rerun it this is how this works in addition to this you will also get something interesting which is documentation so if i go to redoc you will see it has documented this solution this api you don't need to do documentation yourself you see all the different um routes that you have there the home it has nothing the but the predict route has all these parameters which are string these are them uh these are the parameters this is the Successful response that is possible, a validation error that is possible. I mean, if you write something very long, you will be it will be interesting to see how this 27 less than 27 lines of codes actually get you not just a working solution which you can get from the docs. So if I go to docs, you can interact with this API right here, you know, and you also have an API uh, that documents that you can also access through an API these all these are there to you know to enjoy right so remember the whole concept is just to show you what is possible that's why we are using several frameworks to deploy solutions i will encourage you to take it off from there to read more about these frameworks by checking the different documentation links right thank you and bye